Always remember when painting with chalk paint, make sure your brush is moist and you have a water spray bottle on hand. This will move your chalk paint around. It is extremely thick and you're going to use a lot less paint. It's always easiest to make your first coat a little bit on the thinner side. As we get into our second coat, you're going to see why. As you can see, we're creating lots of random brush strokes. The reason is, is we want to build up some texture. And again, as we get into the second coat, I'm going to explain why. The reason we want to have lots of random brush strokes so we can create high points and low points within the paint. I always find it very helpful to paint around the edges and frames of drawers or doors so your paint doesn't build up any thickness or create any runoff. So here I'm just using a heat gun to speed up the uh, dry process in between the steps, but you can use a hair dryer as well. So when you're applying the color wash, just get the paint on there and get your rag moving around as quickly as possible and this is what's going to really create some beautiful texture. So always remember too that with color washing, your rag is going to get saturated fairly quickly. So make sure you've got a few on hand and swap them out as your rag gets more moist with the color wash. So when I'm working on a vertical angle, to avoid runoff with my paint wash, I remove excess paint wash from the brush apply my paint wash to my vertical angle then as I'm ragging I will use my mist water spray and activate the paint wash as I keep ragging. So doing the exact same technique as we did with the color wash, we're going to do it with the custom color glaze. And what I want to show is more depth and dimension with using the glaze and the ragging technique. So again, four parts clear glaze, one part paint.
just like the color wash, the custom color glaze is really important that each of your glaze applications are completely dry before applying your next. So with the custom color glaze applications, you'll notice that it doesn't have the same type of runoff because it's a thicker medium when you're doing your rag application. There's a little bit more control involved, so definitely have some fun. So I'm loving these results. Everything looks fantastic. Again, base coat of the brown chalk paint. Then we did the ragging technique with a gray, light gray, Chicago gray, uh, chalk paint wash. One water to paint ratio. Looks very similar to this as well. I've gone back, I've done the glaze, clear glaze, four parts clear glaze, one part paint. I did the brown on fleur and I did the gray, Chicago gray, both with the ragging technique. So just giving you a full outline, get the similar outcomes and everything looks fantastic. Glaze is just, again, is going to give you a, just a little bit more defined um, texture because it's a, uh, a decorative medium. And again, it's not a sealer. So I still need to go back and clear wax this. Um, and if I do anything else, I'm going to let you know. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. One last quick tip. If I don't think you could have seen it on camera, but if you did, it doesn't matter. If you ever notice you get little pieces of lint on your finishes as you're using these rags and these washes or anything like that, um, what I will go back and do if I caught those is just really, really fine sandpaper, like 220 grit, and just lightly sand, and that should take those little lint pieces that got stuck on your wash or your glaze finish. So don't, if you can't get them off or you're getting frustrated because there's a few pieces that is going on your finish, don't, don't worry, don't fret about it. It's just a little bit of sandpaper. It won't hurt your finish. It'll just take those off. And of course, you need to do that before you clear wax. Just wanted to let you know. I'm going to quickly show you how you can create some textures with colored glaze. And I'm going to use the burnt umber, not amber, umber. And I'm going to show you with some artist brush and just with some shop towels. It's really easy. I'm going to put a close up with the camera and you can see how I'm doing it. And this can be applied to anything. Um, even if you're painting decor things like vases, things like that, and you just want this organic texture, kind of similar to what dark wax does, but you have a little bit more control. 
The key factor is to put some clear glaze first, then put your color. Because if you don't like what you've done, you can just wipe it away. Easy peasy. So always remember, you're gonna apply your clear glaze first, that's acting as your base. Then with the shop towel, what you're going to do is you're gonna wrap it into your finger and you're just gonna keep dabbing. And this is gonna create high and low points with your glaze, as well as creating texture and blending all at the same time. So again, adding a darker glaze is very similar to adding a darker wax. In this form, I'm just adding a little bit more detail and texture and it feels a little bit more in control. This is a total option. You don't have to do this. Again, I just wanted to give you some other decorative ideas that you can do with your chalk paint furniture. Mm -hmm. 